All right, this is the Lexus ISF, the 2UR engine series timing chain uh, tutorial, I guess you could call it. Uh, I initially looked for videos online and a lot of other places for information, and there was none. So I'm going to do a brief video here of the overview. Uh, but it's really not as bad as it seems. I mean, there's chains everywhere and parts and bits and bots and all sorts of stuff, but the... Um, Parts list isn't bad, and this, the Toyota directions on TIS are really good. So we'll get into it, and then I'll talk about some of the old parts and some issues that I see and all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> now, you can take apart everything. I'm not going to go over that because that's the easy part. You just remove a bunch of bolts, and the stuff falls out. Um, that's about it. Keep track of uh, where bolts go, baggies, tape, however you want to do it. Um, but first of all... This assembly is going to get installed on the engine with the chains already installed on them. Um, it's not as difficult as it might seem because the cams, um, the driver's side is a little bit, you have to mess with it, uh, but this side wasn't bad because they aligned okay. Um, there wasn't cam resistance like in the middle of a compression stroke or anything. So real simple, chains, um, these are all Toyota parts. So you'll see the two orange marks and then the timing mark on the intake uh, cam assembly. Uh, very important too, this bolt is labeled as non-reusable, so make sure to order a new one when you do this. Uh, so that line right there is the timing mark and that vaguely corresponds to you know the, the alignment. This is going to be a little bit off degree wise, same with the other side, don't worry about that right now. This back chain, same thing, you can see the yellow mark. That's, that timing line goes straight back. So yellow mark on the back chain, yellow mark on the back chain to the mark, right there, very clear. And then, um, so then this front chain also, the two marks right to the middle there. And you just let the bottom chain kind of hang down as you put this on. Um, you're gonna have to slide on the sprocket, that inner sprocket, and um, put the chain on after you get these on. So you're going to put these on the cams, make sure the little knockout hole or the knockout pins as they call them are lined up. Um, this is the little advance and retard, the VBTI thing. Um, they say to when you install it, just spin it all the way counterclockwise and then you put the motors on and that's almost vertical up and down like that. Um, these will, don't forget to torque these this one you can reuse, this exhaust one is fine, but this one, um, I don't know if it's because it's aluminum or hex or Y or torque to yield or something, but its label is non-reusable. Okay, so you got that on, and there's also, same thing down here on the bottom, I don't know if I can get it very well, uh, yeah, you can kind of see the marks, same situation, just line up that color with the dot on the sprocket. And then uh, once this is on, you install this slipper first. Make sure to torque the bolts, of course. Uh, and then after that's on, you install the damper. And the damper, I believe, is the side with the hydraulic tensioner, which you can see right there. Uh, now after you install this, it tells you to remove the pin. There's a small pin that holds this tensioner right here. So when you pull the pin, it releases it and then puts tension on the, the chain. Same thing down here, after you install this, pull the pin and it's like a ratcheting, it's kind of like a ratcheting tensioner with the oil pressure behind it. Uh, pretty cool. So this side's done. This side, the driver's side's a little bit more tricky. Um, now you'll see this side is actually a little bit more. Toyota says it's 33 degrees this way. And I think it says that this is 11 degrees that way. So it's not going to be dead straight center. Same process though. You line up the marks, the little chain, the yellow mark right there, and then you can't really see it over there. And this pink thing you'll see is the pin. You might want to keep these for future use. Um, but again, I need to pull this pin out when I finish everything up, and that puts tension on this back chain because it's loose right now. So as long as all your marks line up with the paint and the lines and the crank, you know you're good. 
<clears throat> now the tricky part on this side was um, putting this chain on this front sprocket, lining up the mark with the paint, because you have to play with the, the cam position. You have to hold, you actually should go from this side, and then you kind of hold the crank with your, the cam with your right hand, and then you get a socket on the pulley bolt down here with your left hand, and you need to get the chain on and line it up with the mark first, and then make sure that the slack is on the tensioner side. The problem I ran into was the slack was on this side, and so when the cams jump back because they're in kind of mid-stroke right now, it would, it would jump the, the chain. So I figured out I had to adjust this and also the cam um, to get it to line up and then move the slack on this side of the chain. So that's it. Next part, I'll kind of look at the components and we'll go from there.